Stan Gibalisco here to show you a cross-sectional pictorial drawing of a device called a paper capacitor. Actually paper referring to the dielectric material. Uh, and the capacitor isn't entirely made of paper. It's a layer of foil, a layer of paper, and then a layer of foil, and then a layer of paper. So you've got two layers of foil and two layers of paper alternately stacked. They're shaped like strips and then you just roll them up and when you've finished rolling them up you have two connections alternating layers of the foil which form the conductive part of the capacitor separated by alternating layers of the paper which forms the dielectric material of the capacitor. And the whole thing is soaked in oil, mineral oil, or some other kind of, of oil-like substance. Wiped off, cleaned off, and encased in a epoxy uh, tubular-shaped enclosure. Sometimes these are called tubular capacitors for that reason, uh, not having anything to do with vacuum tubes. But they uh, do have a relatively high working operating voltage. In fact, they can work upwards of a thousand volts DC they can handle. And their range is typically 0 0.001 microfarads or a thousand picofarads to 0.1 microfarads. Uh, they're good for use at radio frequencies because the dielectric material if properly encased, if the whole thing is properly encased in epoxy, it will stay mineralized for a long time, and that is to say wet with oil, and will have excellent dielectric properties in low loss for a long, long time. You, you aren't too likely to see these made new anymore, but you can certainly find them in used parts repositories. Uh, so I believe AmplifiedParts.com probably has them. This is figure 11-5 on page 191 of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 6th edition, published in June of 2016 by McGraw-Hill, written by myself, co-authored with Simon Monk, who contributed brand new chapters for this edition, one on microcontroller devices and one on the Arduino device or Arduino microcontroller in particular. Uh, I think you'll find that useful if you're more into the new age electronics and you'll find me more useful if you are a fuddy-duddy and love old-time electronics such as paper capacitors. They still work. They've worked for decades. If it's not broken, why fix it? So you can have a cheap alternative to some of the more expensive types of capacitors out there today. Mica being uh, one of them. Uh, there are others always evolving. But the paper capacitor is a good old standby. It's non-polarized. It works well up to several tens of megahertz uh, for radio frequency operation. And it will handle high voltage. So that is the anatomy of today's fuddy-duddy electronic device, the paper capacitor, sometimes also called a tubular capacitor. Once again, the book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 6th edition, You'll also find this type of capacitor discussed in all editions of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, although it may not necessarily be in Chapter 11 and almost certainly will not be on page 191. Again, this is Figure 11-5 in that book, and there's a lot more good stuff about capacitors in it. I recommend you get the paper-bound copy, not the electronic copy. Amazon.com sells new or used copies, depending on your budget, as do BarnesandNoble.com 
and I believe Google probably also sells them and other online booksellers or if you're lucky enough to find a bricks and mortar bookstore near you give them a little business and if they don't have it on the shelf order it through them keep them from going entirely out of business so you can't buy books anywhere except at specialty shops it's coming you know the brave new world of we don't have any place to get anything it's coming I can hardly wait <laughs> and if you believe that I've got some great oceanfront property in South Dakota for sale cheap Stan Jibalisco signing off until next time so long